Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. So today we're going to chat a little bit about vibrato. So this is quite a controversial subject amongst cellists and string players. You know, everybody has a different idea of what the purpose of vibrato is, how it should be used, and how to achieve it technically. So I'm going to give you all just my thoughts, my feelings and opinions about this subject, but please feel free to disagree. Um, this, as I said, is a very controversial subject. Everybody has their own ideas about it. So I'm going to speak a little bit about what I believe the purpose of vibrato is and how it should be used. And at the end, I'll speak about the mechanism and technically how one should go about achieving it. All right. So for me, vibrato should never ever be constant. And that might be something that a lot of you feel strongly uh, against, but this is really what I believe. So imagine if somebody were to play a full 30 minute concerto and for the entire time they use the same amount of bow hair, the same amount of bow speed, same amount of pressure and same contact points. Well, this would be incredibly boring, right? It'd be extremely monotonous. It'd be very difficult to find some kind of uh, expression or story from that, right? But for some reason, we don't usually hold our vibrato to the same standard. So that's what I would like to encourage all of you to think about, is how can you make your vibrato an incredibly expressive and creative tool? You see, we have the speed of the vibrato, slow or fast. We have the width of the vibrato, whether you're going on a narrow distance or a wide distance, and also the timing. You know, when and as particular note do you choose to begin the vibrato? And how do those two things, the speed and the width, how do they change through the course of the note? You see, I believe basically no one single note in the repertoire should have a constant, exactly the same vibrato from the beginning to the end of the notes. There should be some kind of shape in it, some kind of life within the notes. Yeah, so that's my opinion. Um, then we'll talk just a little bit about how to achieve that vibrato technically. So first things first, don't ever squeeze with the thumb. This is not going to achieve anything. You see, a lot of people, they, they think, well, I'm pushing against the string with my finger, so I must have something to push it back against in order to get the best sound. And this is just completely uh, counteractive to what you are trying to produce because then the cello is going to stop resonating, it's going to stop ringing because you're creating all this tension on it, um, unnecessary tension that is not benefiting your sound. You see, so instead, try to find a way to use simply the weight of the arm. You should feel this energy coming really all the way from your back, through the arm, the elbow, the wrist, down into the fingers and into the fingerboard. You see, that's going to achieve a very centered, yet very natural and resonant sound. It's going to be ringing so much better. Yeah, so I find um, one thing that often Chandis played with a very high elbow, and this creates this disconnect here in the wrist. Right, it's kind of a dead end of the energy. But if instead you lower the elbow a little bit, then you have a much more natural um, line here into the notes, into the fingerboard. And that's going to allow the energy to really truly flow from your back into the fingerboard. And so that's the first thing. Once you've gotten that, and you have this centered sound now, centered pitch within the vibrato, then relax your tricep back here. And that's going to make the overtones ring like crazy. You're going to love the sound you're going to make with this. So first get the weight, don't squeeze the thumb, and then relax the tricep and see what this does for you. I think you will be really uh, pleased with the result. So um, those are the two main things I have for you about how to produce vibrato technically. There are things that often people forget about and it then creates problems for them. So I really recommend you um, try out those two steps. 
Um, the only other thing is a uh, kind of overall concept about vibrato that we often forget about, which is in the lower registers, when we're down here on the fingerboard, our vibrato must be wider than it is when we are way up here high on the fingerboard. And as you can imagine, the reason for that is because the pitches down here are further away from each other than they are down here on the fingerboard. That's just the mechanics of the instrument. So in order to achieve the same width of pitch in our vibrato, um, the one down here must be physically wider than the one up here. You see, I hope that makes sense. At the end of the day, vibrato, as I said, is an expressive tool and you should really just use it um, how you imagine it to give expression to your music. Yeah, so all of these are just my thoughts about it. But at the end of the day, I really encourage you to listen to your voice, listen to your heart, what it tells you and how to use the vibrato as a tool in your instrument and in your music making. You see, some people ask me to recommend some specific vibrato exercises. And I have to say, this is not really something that I do um, because I think there's a danger in this that we create one automatic vibrato. This kind of just this one vibrato that we keep in our back pocket and then we put it over everything in all the music that we play. And this is the danger, right? It becomes monotonous then. Just as I was saying, if you use the bow in the same way in a full concerto. Yeah. So for that reason, I only practice the vibrato within the music that I am playing. See, if I run into a problem in the piece, I'm not getting the vibrato I desire, then I will stop and think, what can I do differently to achieve that? By listening to my voice and to my heart. So that is what I recommend to you all. I hope that helps a little bit you know, of course, it's not some comprehensive um, guides to how to vibrate, um, but it's just a few tips that I thought would um, give you all some ideas. So I hope you can use it in your practice sessions, see how it helps you out. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.